Hey guys, welcome back. I decided to sit down and film two videos today and it was a little late in the afternoon and between filming what I was gonna do and doing the intros and outros to the videos, my light has gone down. So there is light for while I'm showing you what I'm showing you, just right now there's not. Today I'm going to show you how to apply Estee Lauder Double Wear so that it won't look heavy and cakey and just bad. There's a lot of people out there that struggle with the application and just with it not looking right when they apply it. And I have been asked numerous times to do this video. I have shown you in several videos what it looks like on my skin and I've talked about how I apply it. Now you can get medium to full buildable coverage with this and not look like you are wearing heavy duty foundation. And I think that that's the goal of most people. Most people don't wanna walk around and look like they are wearing pounds of makeup. I have talked about my love for this foundation many times if you've watched my foundation road test. I've talked about it and done a comparison with it with Double Wear Light, and I've done a foundation road test on Double Wear Light, but I've not done a foundation road test with this just because I've worn this for years and years. I'll be happy to do one if you guys want me to. This is not so much a foundation road test as it is showing you guys how I apply it and have it looking nice and like it's not heavy and it doesn't look cakey at all. There is a technique to it. You can't just go in and apply this like you do every single other foundation that you own. If you have oily combination skin like I do, it lasts on my skin all day, all night long. I am a huge fan and I don't know how many bottles I have gone through of this stuff, but I just love it. There is a way to apply it where it doesn't look heavy, it doesn't look like a mask, it doesn't look flat. You just have to know how to do it. And I think that that is a struggle for a lot of people because they go in and they try to apply it just like every other foundation. They dot it all over their face and then they go in to apply it either with a brush or a beauty blender and you just can't do that. And you can apply it section by section on the face like I do very quickly you just have to know the technique and I will just go ahead and say, and I think I actually said this as I was going through in a minute, but I don't recommend using a brush. I just don't think you get nearly as good of a finish with a brush. I'm a huge fan of using a beauty blender or a real technique sponge, whatever sponge you prefer. I just think that gives a much better finish with this foundation. You can get a nice finish. I have it on right now. You guys have seen me wear it before in other videos and I like it. So if you want to see how to apply Estee Lauder Double Wear and not look like you're wearing a mask, just keep watching. If you've watched any of my foundation road test or foundation videos at all, you know that I apply a pea size amount of whatever primer I'm using first, and I've already done that today. Today I used Guerlain's Meteorites Base Pearls. My other primer that I use most often is the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. Sometimes under double wear, I've used Becca Backlight Priming Filter. I think that's the name. I'll link it below. It just kind of gives a subtle glow underneath foundation, but it's not too much. Whatever primer you use, just go ahead and apply it. Let it sink in a little bit after you applied your normal skin treatments, of course. Today, I also did put my corrector on underneath my eyes first. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. It's really just your call and your preference. I have no idea why I did that today. I just felt like it. Um, sometimes what I do too is while I'm letting my Facial primer sink in, I will go ahead and do my eye primer just to give it, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute to just let the primer sink into my face. The next thing that I would recommend for applying double wear to get good coverage is to use a beauty blender or a similar sponge. I don't feel like using a brush gives it that natural non-cakey coverage nearly, I just don't think it does nearly as well. And with a beauty blender, you want to run it underwater, get it good and wet, get it, you know, where it swells up, and then squeeze it out as much as you can, and then squeeze it in a towel. So just take a towel, wrap it around it, and squeeze it out as much as you can in a towel. So it's just barely damp. It's still swollen, and it's just barely damp. Like right now, I'm squeezing it. No water's coming out. I just barely feel the dampness in my hand. That's how you want your sponge to be. 
So my shade is 2W1 Dawn right now. You can see all my foundation shades below in the description box. And I'm just gonna shake it up. And this is not a foundation where you are gonna be able to get away with dotting it all over your face and blending it. And I also think that is an issue that people run into is they apply this just like they do every other foundation. You just can't do that. This is one where I pour it onto the back of my hand and I'm almost out of it and I don't have a pump. <laughs> I know there's a MAC pump. Ooh, that's too much. I know there's a MAC pump that you can get that fits it and I meant to get it last time I went and I forgot. So I have way too much here on the back of my hand. I'm gonna actually get some off. Okay, so this is what I have on the back of my hand. I don't know if you can see that. It is a little bit runny. So then I'm gonna take my sponge. I'm actually gonna put my hair in a barrette just to do the forehead for you guys. I normally would not do this on a daily basis. So I'm then gonna take my beauty blender and I'm going to just barely dab it in here and get just a little bit on the sponge. And I'm just gonna take it and start bouncing it on my forehead. And I may take it slightly down the nose, but not much. So you're gonna do one section of the face at a time and make sure it's good and blended in before you move to the next section. And I got such little product on there at a time because you don't want to get too much product and then have it looking cakey. You can't go back. You can always build up later, but you can't go back. It builds very well. Okay, see that was quick. So what I want to do now is just get a little bit more. And now I'm going to take it down my nose. And I'm just bouncing it and getting, getting it all blended in the way I want it. And dipping it again and now I'm gonna do this side of my face not cover it up with the palette and see there's really no systematic thing I'm just literally taking it all over the face and bouncing it or all over the side of the face and bouncing it That got my whole face just now and that is good medium coverage it took away the redness I blended it down my neck a little bit but not too much and it really just evened everything out and I can build it up if I want I'll take what's left and like I don't mind a few of my natural spots showing through I am NOT one that wants just a ton of full coverage anyway that's just me. But this foundation, I'm sure that you know, is buildable, medium to full coverage. So I mean, if you want to build it up, you can, you know, like if you have, you know, my nose, I have some sunspots. So if I wanna cover them a little bit more, I can. And that's much better to do it that way and just take a teeny tiny little bit of product on the sponge and build it as opposed to caking it on the first time and not being able to take it away. But like, it's so seamless in my skin. It doesn't even look like I'm wearing full coverage foundation or medium to full coverage. It just looks like, it just looks good. So I hope that you can see that on the screen and it's not too blown out. I'm gonna adjust my lighting a little bit because the sun's kind of coming through pretty bad on this side. Can you see that a little bit better? And once I have makeup on, it'll all come together and it'll look really, really seamless and nice. I hope that helped a little bit and showed you that it doesn't take long to get good coverage. If you want to build it up, you can, but it gives non-cakey, non-heavy coverage, and it looks good. I really wasn't even going to mention this part because it's powder, but I do have a tutorial on this, and I will link it below. I'm going to kind of fly through this. I use my Laura Mercier translucent powder and I do apply it with my beauty blender also and I just dip it in and I just get a bunch on there and I just put it all over the face and buff it in and I think that that helps it also look a little more natural and I just kind of roll the sponge press the sponge into the face and it just gives a more natural look 
as opposed to having the powder sitting on top of the foundation. And then I take what's left in the top, any just little excess, and then I just dust that on the face and kind of blend in any patches that weren't quite blended in evenly before. And I think that that helps. So I didn't wanna leave this step out because I don't know, it might be part of it. And you know, if you're someone who just doesn't set with powder, that's fine, but there's a lot of us who have to set with powder and I'm one of them, so that's part of it. And I'll be back when I'm finished with my makeup just to show you what it looks like when I'm finished. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you found it somewhat helpful. And if you are not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button today. If you're not following me on my social media platforms, I'll put those on the screen and in the description box as well. But I am very active on Snapchat and Instagram and Twitter as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.